What are you doing? Man, do I have something to share today? Alright, so today I'm just gonna be showing some new additions that have I have recently got um, recently that I haven't I have never really showcased on this channel before. So let's get into it. So first up is these harvestmen, as you can see in the corner over here. These are actually an unidentified species of Pseudogagrella. Um, so teacher from Vertebrate Dude actually, uh, we came up with a name uh, called the Pseudogagrella species Brastagi Pelfaced. So I did went recently went go to a district in northern Sumatra called oh, come on Brastagi, and I, well, this is where I collected these harvestmen. So uh, they're really pretty, as you can see over here. I am hoping to be able to breed these guys in the future and it's a, a species that I would really love to introduce in the invertebrate hobby sometime. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and maybe try to offer some fish pouts. Uh, I've fed them fruits before, they absolutely love it. So yeah. Anyway, there is a harvestman over here. I'm gonna just drop one pellet in here. Hopefully he'll take it. I think he's putting his little front legs there to smell. Oh, and there he goes. He picks up the pellet. Isn't that adorable? There he is. Walking away with it. Alright, I'm just gonna sprinkle a couple more down here for the rest. And that's it, I guess, for the harvestman. <clears throat> My voice, sorry, for the harvestman. of two beetle species. This one is the sawtooth grain beetle, also known as Orizaphilus suranomensis. And this one is the greater grain weevil or something, that's what it's called. Um, the Cetophilus ZMAs, if I remember that correctly. So they're not they're usually under the corn. This this is maize corn. Uh, dried up maize corn and I have observed that they do really well on it and yeah there you as you can see there's a lot of them under there and I think uh, since there was no ventilation holes here a lot of them actually died out but um, I have another bigger colony in a bigger a bigger uh, enclosure um, that I'm uh, keeping in a cupboard so let me grab that real quick. okay this one also has no ventilation but I don't know why a lot of them are still surviving in here if I can find any, they're, as I said, they're usually under, deep down there. But if I can find any, I'll definitely showcase them. Oh, here's one, right here. Never mind. As you can see over here, we have a little, a little one over here. They're relatively small. But compared to another species of Cetophilus I have, which is the Orizae, the rice weevils, they're quite much larger than them. 
but uh, yeah, this is the Cetaphil's ZMAs. For the next beetle species, you can see them already roaming around this cup. They're, this is a small colony. I also have a bigger colony in my storage cupboard. And they're thriving in there too, but I, f I see that these guys do well, even in this thing. Uh, these are the sort of green beetle, as I mentioned previously. They're really small, but they're pretty fast, so... And they can climb, as you can see here, so I don't really want to open this to risk anything. But, uh, yeah. I'm also feeding them a bit of oatmeal, other than their primary substrate, which is barley. Is, is what I'm using them in, raw barley. But, yeah. This is actually a millipede species that I collected also in Brastagi, the, the place I got the the harvestmen from earlier. I see they finished their cucumber here. Oh my gosh, they're they're really voracious. There's only a little bit of the skin left. Ah, oh, camera, come on. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's actually a little millipede clinging on right here. Look at him. Hello, little buddy. And I think he's pooping on me. All right. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of poop on me as well. These guys, as you can see, the substrate is pretty much covered in, in droppings. But I don't think that's much big of a deal. Anyways, I'm gonna take out this uh, cucumber and let's check them out. So, here he is. This is, this is Oxidus gracilis, the greenhouse burpee. These guys, you're probably familiar with them invading your gardens. These guys are invasive. Um, um, I forgot where they're... Native to, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna write it here if, if there even is any. Um, so yeah. They're pretty similar to the Orthomorpha Quadrata that I have, but they're just relatively bigger. Just slightly bigger. And uh, yeah. Enclosure, it consists of sphagnum moss, obviously. They love sphagnum moss, but they also love decaying wood. As seen here, they they do munch for, uh, munch on it from time to time, and some leaf litter or rotting leaves here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I all got to say for these guys. And moving on, so this one is actually an isopod species. These are a fairly common kept species in the hobby. Um, if I can find any, there are a lot of them mostly hiding. Oh, uh, there's one under there, but I can't get them. Let me just dig here. Alright, there's one. So you can get him. Here. These are, you probably know them, uh, Porcello livis or Porcello livis Derrickow. Fairly commonly kept species in the hobby, like I mentioned, and they also reproduce like crazy, but I've just gotten these yesterday, so of course they haven't had any mankind yet. But uh, yeah, they also, I'm pretty sure they also do pretty well at clean up crew, at being, oh, ooh, ooh, and as you can see, they're quite fast, I would say. But yeah, I'm just using a little piece of repti bark here uh, for their, um, for some of their hides, but yeah. This is also fairly basic, just some wood, sphagnum moss, and substrate. So yeah. That's all for the Porcelli livis. Moving on. Right, so this is a, a species of Telebryonid that I also collected near Brastagi in a local garden. It, it's out of Brastagi, but it's really close. Uh, these are uh, some random species of Gonocephalus. I'm thinking it's Conosum, but I, I'm not really sure about that. As you can see, they're usually munching on the rotting wood. And I also feed them fish pellets occasionally. And I actually haven't fed them some pellets in quite a while now, so let's do that. In the original collecting spot, I collected five specimens of this species. And one died already, but I'm not sure where the other one is. Anyway, let's give them this pellet. Hmm. 
Hopefully they smell it. Um, oh yes, they definitely smell it. There goes one. Looks like he's really enjoying that one too. I've actually seen these guys fight for pellets before. It's pretty hilarious to see. They're just four beetles all fighting for a single pellet. But uh, yeah, there they are. Uh, let's offer some of the others to them. I guess their their wood is the wood is their main food source, but I do give them pellets occasionally, and like I said previously, even the biggest antennae a bit. Is he gonna get it? Yeah, this guy is really enthusiastic for it. <laughs> Look at him. This goes for it. Nibbling on it. There's actually a lot of bite marks on the on the wood <laughs> here, and it all makes sense because these guys they are the herbivores. They they feed on rotting stuff. So uh, yeah, this one is a really small species of spider. Uh, this is wait, hold on. This is Odignatha scrobiculata. Uh, there he is. Pretty small. Ooh, he, he's occasionally pretty bolty as well, but I don't think he's really so bolty today, which is good. There he is. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, got him. No right. Probably already see this this little guy in the corner over. Over here, over here, he's a Rhinchophorus vulneratus, <clears throat> a red palm weevil. And that's kind of an ironic name because the whole body is black except for the 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 thorax. Yeah, that's the word. The, the thorax uh, only has a single red stripe. <laughs> so let's try to open the wood. Hopefully, get to see him. And unfortunately, I only have one because this guy was actually gifted to me as a single specimen. Is he dead? Oh no. He was alive yesterday. Oh man. So unfortunate. Oh man, look at this guy. He's actually dead. Man, that's unfortunate. But anyway, as I was saying. He was gifted to be as a single palm weevil, no, no extra specimens, just single weevil. <laughs> but man, this is unfortunate. This is the biggest weevil species I've actually ever kept. Uh, the others are just the orize, the rice weevils, and the greater grain weevil that we previously showcased on this video. But, well, I guess it's how life works. Rest in peace, little buddy. This is a, a creature that I never expected to be keeping so soon, but, well, here they are. These are uh, some neothermies, some random neothermies species. Uh, there's one over there, a little worker. Hold on. There he is. And uh, I'm pretty sure the rest of the colony is either hiding down there in that little, <clears throat> the little orange thingy, 
or inside this little piece of bark. But I don't think we'll see them so often, so let's let's leave them alone. Whoops. Let's leave them alone. Now yeah, it's actually a an Arge Argeope species, uh, Argeopea nasuja to be specific. And for some reason, she has already made a proper web yesterday when I made this enclosure, but she ruined it and I have no idea what she's doing. So, yeah, the web is completely ruined. I never I never disturbed her or anything. Uh, she just completely ruined her web by herself, but I just hope she will make a new one. And uh, there she is. Whee! <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. She, I feel like she's just playing it right now. She's just going up and down, up and down with the web. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing?